The views and opinions of this program are those of the host guests and callers. There is substantial risk of loss in trading futures and options, which you should carefully consider prior to trading. Well, on the first trading day of 2024, I wonder if some folks want to go back to 2023 in some of these uh, markets. Uh, down day in grains and oil seeds. Hogs had a rough one. Cattle, though, did trade their way higher on the session. Let's talk about what we saw on that first trading day of the new year and get some perspective and market analysis today from Jacob Burks with agmarket.net joining us on the program. Jacob, happy new year, buddy. Good to uh, talk with you again. Hope you had a great holiday season. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, yeah it, was, uh, it was a good holiday season. Had the kiddos back home. Didn't have a whole lot of uh, traveling to do. And so, yeah, it was fun. Uh, we didn't get a white Christmas, but we got a wet Christmas. Uh, which in our area, if you look on that drought monitor, a wet, a wet Christmas was was good. Uh, we had some uh, some some moisture that went into the ground. It felt like so, uh, yeah, it was a good time and uh, ready to kick off the 2024. Just would like to have a redo maybe on uh, on the first trading day of the year. Yeah, kind of a, a redo. I think would be nice. Uh, it would be very welcome because I mean. It, it, grains especially just kind of became a sea of red after the open I, I know we had a strong dollar to kick off the new year i have to think that was a a primary headwind or at least the excuse we're being given for a headwind here maybe in the grains but uh just kind of a down day beans chicago wheat kind of led us to the downside I, I mean big picture let's let's take a wide angle here first was there any one thing outside of maybe a dollar and just ample supplies combined that uh, drove these markets lower on Tuesday. What do you think, Jacob? Yeah, I, I think the main factor, Jesse, was what we looked at at the end of last week, coming through a three-day weekend. Uh, when you're in, you know, when you're in the middle of a, a weather market, uh, whether we like it or not, we, you know, not because it's raining in Southwest Wisconsin, but but why it's uh, potentially had the potential for rain uh, in in the the biggest part of uh, the biggest producer of soybeans in in, in the Mato Grosso area of Brazil. And so that was anticipated. If you saw like uh, looking into the March uh, soybean contract going into Thursday and Friday, we started to see that pullback happen. We started to see the little bit, you know, the potential of that that rain event happening. And we did start to pull back a little bit. And, you, you know, we confirmed the rains over the weekend uh, and, and in you know, anticipation this morning, you know, no overnight markets. So you, you anticipated seeing a, a pretty heavy move lower, ended up gapping lower and moved lower in the soybeans. And uh, I know you were busy all morning fixing stuff at home, but uh, <laughs> the markets actually traded in a funny, unique way where uh, you know, we st started with the bean market, then the corn market fell off. And then later in the day, the wheat market fell off. So it was a it was a gradual move. And so a lot of that kind of felt like it was some fun money, fun potential, or potentially some fun money coming in and out of that marketplace. Well, and you're right. I was busy trying to fix a heater here at, at our house. So I was a little disconnected from the markets. So uh, I'm glad you brought that up, kind of the, the disconnectedness uh, to start the new year at some of those markets. But you mentioned the funds and some of that fund money. And I feel like we talked about that a lot last year and in 2022, really since COVID. I think we've talked a lot about the funds and how they're playing such a huge role in commodities. And one has to wonder with this calendar flipping to 2024, we're going to see a lot of funds get out of commodities, move to stocks. I, I, there's a lot of folks who are, are asking that question right now, Jacob. Man, Jesse, if we uh, if we lose any more, it's going to be you know, it's be some historical times. What we've seen in the index funds, and the index funds are your long only funds. They're always buying. It's an inflationary hedge. Well, when you start uh, a heavy deflationary year and you've cut the deflation all year long, those funds are going away. There's not a lot of optimism that they have that we're going to see this big move up in the commodity. Uh, position. Uh, I think in 2022, July was uh, somewhere in that area was our high of index fund involvement, like 1.5 million contracts. Now we're down to like 800,000. So that's a significant withdrawal from the, the the grain complex. That's that's I shouldn't say grain complex. That's the ag complex that, that we're mm -hmm. talking. And so that's uh, that's something that's that's withdrawn from the marketplace. Now, potentially, if we see them start uh, uh, you know, seeing inflation move higher if we cut rates too fast. How long that would take, I don't know. Uh, but but the, the the fund community we, is, is is a group that we need as producers to help take that other side of the trade to 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 help. Uh, you know, hopefully be the the long the long owner uh, of the of the commodities and, and uh, it's an inflationary hedge. Now the the managed money group. 
uh, was what looks like we saw come in here today and, and see some pressure. Uh, you've, start, you've seen them take their 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 corn position down to like 177,000 contracts. Now they're short. Uh, this is the smallest, uh, as of Friday's report for last Tuesday, the smallest bean position we've had for a long time uh, as far as the long position. So we, 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 we sold that off pretty heavy. Uh, in the last couple of weeks. So yes, uh, uh, are they going to, they're going to come. What's the incentive right now? We've seen a big move up. You've seen 15.8% uh, stocks to use in the, in the, in the corn. Uh, we, you know, the beans had a story. Now we're starting to see rain. I don't know what it is that gets them back. Uh, you know, maybe, uh, maybe all boiling towards a potential uh, surprise in the January 12th report. I mean, this is kind of almost like you're crossing your fingers. You talk about doing a redo or going back to 2023. Uh, there's no way I'm trying to say that this is like last year, but when we walked into the first day of the trade last year in July in January 23, that was the best day to sell corn except for maybe one day or two days uh, in the middle of July. Uh, I'm not anticipating that happen, but we can see these markets that don't have those seasonal, you know, spring rallies, and and uh, you know it, it makes it sets off a, a kind of a bad taste in your mouth as you walk in the first part of the year here. Let's talk a little more specifically on this corn market. Uh, traditionally, and you, you brought up, you know, last year, it was probably the best day to sell corn that first trading day of the year. This year, 2024, not so much. Uh, but traditionally, this first week of the year, we could see if the weather's good, which it is this year, a lot of grain movement here. New tax season, you know, it says, okay, time to move some stuff out of storage, pay for some input costs for this coming growing season, et cetera, et cetera. I just wonder though, how many farmers are going to want to move corn at these current price levels? I saw some basis numbers, regional basis numbers. I mean, seeing threes on the board, high yeah. threes. So yeah. I guess I'll ask you this realistically, how much could we possibly see for movement in this corn market here this week? Are you hearing any indications? I mean, what is it going to take? Will farmers just throw in the towel because they're, you know, have to at this point in some cases, or can they hold on a little longer? Uh, well, you know, there, there, there's a lot of guys that structure their operation to where they have some of these bills coming due here. They, they kick the, the can down the road, they defer payment, they, they wait to deliver uh, whatever it takes to get into the new year for, for whatever purpose that is in their operation. Uh, you try to warn against that. You try to have pricing done before that. You can defer payment without deferring pricing. And, and so you, you try to encourage that. But uh, inevitably, there's still some, some guys that, uh, that market the grain that way. Uh, and, and so uh, in years in years past, it's been probably some it's probably benefited them. Uh, but this is the, this is a year that anytime we see any type of upward movement, I think we'll get hit with some sales. I think there's been, been some, uh, uh, you know, we've been cash strong for a while. And, mm -hmm. and, you, and at, at some point you have to, to look at how that uh, plays out into your operation. And, and there's going to be some cash needs along the way. And so I, I am afraid, I mean, even with guys that I have that I market with on a regular basis, there's, there was some scuttlebutt today of like, well, yeah, I'm probably going to end up selling some pretty quick. And it's like, okay, well, we, we need to make sure that we're, you know, using, you know, the risk management tools uh, to avoid this type of market and this type of sell off because yeah, dollar index is up funds, maybe uh, jumping in, but there's also going to be some farmer selling as we go through the first part of this month. That's just inevitable. And I think, uh, too, uh, soybeans as well, uh, watching the weather in South America before we see any sort of moves there. And it, it feels like there's more corn that, that's got to be sold versus soybeans at this point from the U.S. farmer. Right, Jacob? It, it, yeah, it does feel that way. Now, that's kind of what the spreads are telling us, too. I mean, uh, the, the spreads are, are trying to entice you to, hey, hold on to it. We don't want it now. Uh, you know, kick it, kick it down the road. And you go and you start just looking specifically at the spreads and you start looking at what the March May's done. We're at 13 and a quarter today. Okay. Now that's an equivalent of about six and a half, a little over six and a half uh, cents uh, a month. If you go back and look at what the December to March was, that'd be an equivalent of us being around that 20 to 21 cents uh, uh, spread. And so those are some, not, not historic, we've seen them wider, but those are some very, very, very good levels. We're not used to that. And a lot of that has to do with we're marketing now back into an interest rate environment. Uh, you know, the spread can handle that type of movement. So, you know, we encourage guys, hey, if you've got sales on, you know, you're not going to do it. Look at that spread, pay attention to that. You know, we saw some really funny things going on to, today in, in, in the, some of the deferred contracts. Uh, we haven't had hardly any movement in the December 25 contract and we're down seven cents today, gap lower. Uh, so there was some spread activity and they're probably uh, uh, potentially buying December 24 and selling some, some D 25. Uh, I'm not sure exactly how the spread went down, but the, we saw some activity out there 
down a very low volume. Don't get me wrong. This is not a this is not a, a huge <laughs> trade, but there was low volume, and we saw you know quite a bit come off of that uh, these twenty five contracts today. It's very interesting how that all kind of works, and um, I, you know, I'll, I'll be curious to see just how some of these spreads shake out here. Really, throughout this week, Jacob, I think that's uh, this is going to be a big kind of tone setting week here, heading into the January report. Yeah, I think uh, you know the, the the more we sell off in, into that January report, uh, you, you know, could make some surprises. I mean, the, the, when you move early and move before a big report, and not it's not choppy. Uh, if you make a big movement, then it, it, it does set things up for well the potential surprise the other direction because you know the report is going to tell us what the final yield number is. It's going to tell us what our final production number is. Uh, there'll be some adjustments on the demand side, but I think that's what everybody's really uh, anticipating. Uh, that'll also tell us the the de the, the December stock numbers. So. There'll be a lot on that report. There'll be a lot anticipating. I would, uh, just because we're down here on the first day, we go down 25 cents. Uh, it doesn't uh, say that we're not going to see some choppiness. Uh, you know, there'll be some, some, some things, but we did, we did, uh, did do some damage on some of the charts. If you look at uh, uh, the December, excuse me, the March corn chart, a long-term trend line, we closed down below it here. Uh, you know, we'll need to get some pop back above that quickly to, to get some of the, uh, the the algos and some of the technicians to to buy it, to stay above that trend line. Uh, but, you know, we can get into the more of the technical stuff that we just saw some really big chart damage, whether it was in in, in hogs or in, uh, in, in beans today. Uh, just not a lot of support here. Jacob Burks from agmarket.net is our guest analyst here today on Market Talk as we continue our conversation. And let's go over to livestock, Jacob, and let's uh, let's talk cattle. Let, let's talk about something good and positive here on the first trading day of 2024. Uh, both live and feeder cattle, some strong triple-digit gains on the board, a good start to the year. I was a little... I was a little hesitant coming into 2024 here with this cattle market, wondering what would happen. It felt like the markets could be some somewhat uncertain, but seemed pretty certain they wanted to go to the upside on Tuesday. I just wonder if that could last. What's your thoughts in this cattle trade right now? I do. I, I, I'm pretty optimistic. I mean, you got some long-term uh, support in the cattle. Uh, we, we've, we put in some technical uh, strength here as we went through some of the downward channels that we saw. If you go look at a, at a monthly chart and then go back to 2020, uh, 2014. And so there's, there's a lot of correlations. We've analogued that year, whether it's grain or cattle or whatever, we've, we've, we've referenced that area a lot. Uh, and what we've seen, you know, here recently is, is the support after a big cut, uh, pullback in the cattle and feeder cattle contract. And if you look, we're kind of anticipating, uh, uh, you know, to, to follow that type of recovery and that could get up into the, you know, above the 50% retracement into that 62% retracement before you see some technical selling. Now I would say that the, you know, the live cattle in the last week, we saw some stronger cash markets. Uh, you've seen weights start to pull back and then you got some potential weather that's coming in to find you know, winter may finally show up in some of the mm -hmm. plains that's going to cause a, a little bit of that, uh, you know, lack of gain. Uh, you know, you've got a short week this week for kill. So uh, the table was kind of set to see some optimism. It's still surprising anytime you see three and a half dollars higher in the fat cattle and, you know, almost four. At one point, we were four dollars and 20 cents higher in feeder. Those are good days. Those are surprising days. You don't expect that even in a good day. I know, too. Uh, we had that cattle on feed report right ahead of the holidays there. Didn't feel like anything massive jumped out of me. I know there was a couple surprising numbers with how things fell with some of the ranges, but largely it felt like more the same with that recent cattle on feed report, Jacob. I think the, the, the there's not a surprise out there that the inventory of cattle did did get a little bit bigger with some imports, did get a little bit bigger with some, uh, you know, the, 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 the fact that we're still putting heifers in the feedlot. Uh, those numbers haven't started to regain uh, our herd, to start b building that herd. And so the secret's out there that they're not out there that we we, we don't have a lot of uh, fear in, in overproduction uh, at this point. It's just what can the demand do? Can we continue to sell here? Ample supplies of chicken, ample supplies of complementary products. Uh, the dollar index being up doesn't help as far as when we look at our export opportunities. Uh, but I would say that we know that the the, the numbers are going to be short in the beef beef production. We're not killing as many cows. Uh, they're going to have to start getting into the feedlot to to supplement that that beef production. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty optimistic that if the demand can stay, you know, uh, even stay as strong as what it is now, just maintain. 
that uh, this cattle market has an opportunity to go back up. I don't know that we're going to make new lows. The, the reason we were rallying uh, you know, in the last year uh, had a lot to do with inflation and a lot to do with people buying into the commodity complex. So it'll be a, a challenge to get up there and make new highs. It'll have to be something you know, really strong. Uh, but, but inevitably, I think the, the, the strength in that livestock market uh, is kind of here to stay. And in terms of hogs, you know, just your last statement there, that strength in, in the livestock trade. I mean, hogs have been, uh, 2023 was an ugly year for hogs. One has to wonder, can this market find some support and rally here? I mean, what do you think in hogs? Or have we found a bottom, I guess, in this hog market, Jacob? <laughs> if you had asked me this on Friday, I'd have said, you bet we can. It's got some good technical. We're down here at some supportive levels. But the way that we traded today was was ugly. It was it was down below that. Uh, we've seen cash fall off again. Uh, just the, the, you know, the, the hog and pigs number said, Hey, we have a lot of marketable pigs out there. Uh, and, you know, and I, I guess I can't explain why that, that product isn't, isn't going up with cattle. I mean, it, it trades its own financials mm -hmm. or its own fundamentals, but I, I would say that you, you look at the, uh, uh, at the dollar index being higher too. And we rely on that export market uh, even, even greater than we do the beef. And so I think that had a little bit to, to, to weigh on it here. Uh, I think today is one of those days that we'll look back here and I think there'll be some correction coming, uh, but we did put a really big uh, uh, gut punch in that hog market here today. Sorry, uh, you know, not to not to throw the the big question at you and ask you if the bottom's in or not here in the I, I can avoid market. That pretty easy. Yeah, <laughs> the heavy hitting questions to kick yeah. off a new year. Yeah. Jacob, uh, let's wrap it up. Anything final you got for us? Want to share or reiterate for folks today? Well, I, no, I, I think that you you continue to watch some of these outside markets here. Uh, I think when you look at energies. Uh, uh, you know, that's going to kind of lead the way on some of this, uh, the, the fund uh, community uh, as they miss, you know, remanage their money coming into to their investments for this year. So I, I just because we had a, a negative day here, I think that there can be a lot to change. I think there will be some choppiness as we go through this week. But I, I do feel I do feel like these are a good example of, of what the risk management and how that needs to look like on your operation. Uh, you know, whether, whether you're using futures and options or whether you're using cash market, I mean, I think this is something that we're going to have to market grain and livestock different than what we've had to in the last couple of years. There's going to be more of a challenge. Well, if folks have questions as they navigate the markets, I know they can reach out to you and the team there at agmarket.net. Check out a lot of your intel. And uh, we're about a month away from your conference in Nashville, too, that I know I'm going to be there and uh, you guys are all going to be in town. So I know folks can get a lot of info on that and much more online, can't they, Jacob? Absolutely. Agmarket.net. The intel is just a, a good example of, of, of you know information uh, videos. Uh, that, that we get that we put out there kind of give you our philosophy and our thoughts and yeah for in the next month you can come out and hang out with jesse allen in nashville yeah uh the <laughs> invitation is open to everyone yeah. come on down and uh hang out just don't come over to my house the heat might not be working, <laughs> it's so. it could be cold at jesse's <laughs> <laughs> jacob berg sagmarket.net always good to catch up with you my friend thanks for joining us today on market talk and we will catch up with you again soon uh thanks for having me jesse that's going to do it for Market Talk today. Find us online, markettalkag.com. I'm Jesse Allen. Have a great afternoon.